Goodness, I can't handle this. Oh, nothing is working. Oh, I just have to get together. Just do your best and be positive. This is your blog and your opinion. This whole blog show rests in your hooves. Ugh. Oh, computer, I'm just so nervous about this blog. Well, I'm about to do a blog on a recent movie based on a popular cartoon show that was, well, originally aimed at little girls, but it also caught the attention of boys my age. I mean, what if the viewers are judgmental if I praise this movie like the fans do? I mean, smile? Okay, then. Cue the logo. Hey there, everybody. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. And today, I've got something really special to discuss today. First, let's talk about the adorable toys known as My Little Pony. Developed by Bonnie Zekerly for Hasbro, My Little Pony was launched in 1982 and the line became popular during the 1980s. The original toy line ran from 1982 to 1992 in the United States and to 1995 globally. It also inspired animated specials, an animated feature length film, and of course two animated TV series. To me, the 80s and 90s versions of the ponies were a bit cheesy and weird, kind of on the same level as Care Bears and Rainbow Bright. But then, when the 2010s came around, My Little Pony became seriously popular with the Friendship is Magic TV series. Thanks to Craig McCracken's wife, Lauren Faust. The show follows a studious unicorn pony named Twilight Sparkle as her mentor, Princess Celestia, guides her to learn about friendship in the town of Ponyville. Twilight becomes close friends with five other ponies, Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, and Pinkie Pie. Each of the ponies represent a different facet of friendship, and Twilight discovers herself to be a key part of the magical artifacts known as the Elements of Harmony. The ponies travel on many different adventures and help out others around Equestria while working out problems that arise in their own friendships. The series has since then become a major commercial success, becoming the most highly rated original production in the Hub Network's broadcast history and leading to new merchandising opportunities for Hasbro, including books, clothing, collectible trading cards, and comics. Despite the target demographic of young girls, Friendship is Magic has also gained a large following to older viewers, mainly towards young and middle-aged men who call themselves bronies. However, I don't really consider myself a brony due to my Mustang Prince title. And, for those who don't follow me, I should explain that a Mustang Prince is a boy who is a fan of all horses. Also, portions of the show have become part of the remix culture and have formed the basis of a variety of internet memes. What's more, the show has ran for about 169 episodes through seven seasons, with an eighth season scheduled for next year, and a spin-off feature film series known as My Little Pony Equestria Girls started in 2013, and has been shown in limited theatrical screenings prior to television broadcast 
and home media releases. Anyway, today I'm going to blog a movie that may have gotten mixed reviews from critics, but has become a huge hit with not only little children, but also fans of the ponies. But what does a Mustang Prince think of it? Well, we're about to find out. Released on October 6, 2017, the movie is My Little Pony the Movie. Now let's get started. A dark force threatens Ponyville, and Twilight Sparkle and her friends embark on an unforgettable journey beyond Equestria, where they meet new friends and exciting challenges on a quest to use the magic of friendship to save their home. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, out of all the animated films I've seen this year, and out of the past horse movies that I've looked at, like the Unico films, The Last Unicorn, and Spirit Stally the Cimarron, this has got to be the absolute best out of all of them. But that doesn't mean it's just for kids. It could also be for older audiences, especially if they were once fans of My Little Pony. But, in order to explain more information, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film was directed by Jason Faison and based on a story and screenplay co-written by Megan McCarthy, both of which are Friendship is Magic veterans. The film was produced by Allspark Pictures and DHX Media, using traditional animation created by Toon Boom Harmony. So, what are my thoughts on the animation? Well, in my opinion, the pony's transfer from Adobe Flash to Toon Boom Harmony looks absolutely stunning and very magical. Plus, some parts of the animation look almost 3D. And I really love the new locations that Twilight and the rest of the gang go to on their quest to save Equestria. Some of my favorite scenes in the movie are when the ponies become sea ponies, as well as when Twilight makes a hot air balloon, and of course when the ponies, along with their new friends, fight the Storm Guards. Now, what would be a My Little Pony movie without wonderful, magical, and catchy songs. The first song in the movie is We Got the Beat, sung by Rachel Platten, which plays during the opening sequence. To me, this version makes a clever parody of the Go-Go's version. The next song is We Got This Together, sung by the main six and the Canterlot ponies. During the song, Twilight Sparkle is anxious about making Equestria's first friendship festival perfect for everybody. So, her friends assure her that they have what it takes to get the job done. Next is I'm the Friend You Need, sung by con artist Capper, who presents himself to the main six as a trustworthy friend as he guides them through Kludge Town, all while secretly plotting to sell them off to settle a debt. In my opinion, this is a really catchy song, and it almost makes you think of Hook's Tango from Peter Pan from 1960. Next is Time to Be Awesome, sung by Rainbow Dash and a crew of pirate birds led by Captain Solano. When the main six discover that Captain Solano and her delivery crew were once proud pirates, Rainbow Dash and company convince the jaded sailors to renounce their servitude to the Storm King and resume an exciting life of adventure. At the crescendo, Rainbow Dash performs a sonic rain boom in the heat of the moment, which allows a pursuing Tempest Shadow to track them. Oops. Anyway, in my opinion, as the title says, this song is just awesome. It's pretty much in the same league as other great pirate songs like Yo Ho, A Pirate's Life for Me, from Pirates of the Caribbean. The Frigate That Flies, from the Pirate Fairy. And of course, A Pirate Today, from the Swan Princess, Princess Tomorrow, Pirate Today. 
Next is One Small Thing, sung by Pinkie Pie and Company, while they play with a downtrodden Princess Sky Scar to cheer her up. Eventually inspiring the Sea Ponies to offer the main six their prized magic pearl to defeat the Storm King. Unfortunately, Twilight, driven to her wit's end and acting separately from her friends, tries using the party as a distraction to take the pearl herself. Anyway, aside from Twilight's big mistake, this is still such a fun song. It feels pretty reminiscent to songs like Under the Sea from The Little Mermaid, Shy Girl from Freddy as FR07, and of course, Beautiful Briny Sea from Bedknobs and Broomsticks. The last song I need to talk about is the villain song, Open Up Your Eyes, sung by Tempest Shadow. After finally capturing a forlorn twilight, Tempest divulges how she became disenchanted with the ideals of friendship the day she lost her horn, and of course, friends as a filly, which has convinced her that she's better off alone. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes, animation, and songs, let's talk about the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Princess Twilight Sparkle, is voiced by my all-time favorite voice actress, Tara Strong, who has been in The Little Mermaid 2, Rugrats, Teen Titans, The Powerpuff Girls, and of course, Final Fantasy X and X-2. Twilight is a highly magical and intelligent alicorn who is Equestria's Princess of Friendship. She's the leader of the main six ponies, and she's responsible for spreading friendship and harmony across the kingdom. I really love Twilight, not just because of Tara Strong's voice or her leadership and responsibility, but because of the things that she does with her magical horn. Next we have Rainbow Dash and Applejack both voiced by Ashley Ball. Rainbow Dash is a loyal Pegasus with an adventurous spirit and with extreme speed. And Applejack is an honest apple farmer pony whose voice sounds like country queen Reba McIntyre. Next we have Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, both voiced by Andrea Libman. Pinkie Pie is a party-obsessed pony filled with joy and laughter, and Fluttershy is a kind yet timid Pegasus who cares for animals. Kind of like a pony version of Snow White. Next is the lovely Rarity, voiced by Tabitha St. Germain. Rarity is a generous fashion designer unicorn. We also have Spike the Dragon, voiced by Cappy Wesseluck. Spike is Twilight Sparkle's young and faithful assistant. I really like this little dragon, due to the fact that he always sticks by Twilight's side, and he has a crush on Rarity. And I really like the scene during the ending climax, where Spike is used like a flamethrower. Now let's move on to the new characters, starting with one of the antagonists, Tempest Shadow. Voiced by Emily Blunt. Best known from Nomeo and Juliet, which will be getting a sequel next year. Into the Woods. And of course, The Wind Rises. And next year, she'll be the new Mary Poppins in Mary Poppins Returns. Now, Tempest is an embittered unicorn, once known as Fizzlepop Berry Twist, who serves as the Storm King's second-in-command in order to repair her broken horn. In my opinion, Tempest is a pretty dark character, and as I said earlier, after hearing her villain song, Open Up Your Eyes, 
It made me feel bad that her horn was broken by a bear. In fact, that almost made me think of Kamari from Final Fantasy X. In a way, though. But, I'm glad that nearing the end of the movie, after Twilight saved her, Tempest becomes a better unicorn by facing the Storm King herself. Also, in my opinion, Emily Blunt's voice for Tempest made me almost not recognize her. Next, we have Grubber, a wise-cracking hedgehog creature, and Tempest Shadow's cohort, voiced by Michael Pena, who has been in World Trade Center, Turbo, and Ant-Man. To me, I think Grubber is very goofy, and he can be very hungry at times due to him liking food. Next, we have the main villain himself, the Storm King, voiced by Liv Schreiber. This character is a satyr-like leader of the storm creatures who conquers lands in search of powerful magic in order to control the weather. According to Schreiber, the Storm King is prone to temper tantrums, and he's a little crazy. He has a wide range of behaviors. Schreiber also considers the Storm King to be one of the most intense roles he's ever played. Next, we have our first supporting character, Capper, a humanoid alley cat voiced by Tay Diggs. Whom I know from the rock opera movie, Rent. Capper is also a cunning yet good-hearted con artist. In my opinion, Capper is a bit of a mix of Nick Wilde from Zootopia and Puss in Boots from the Shrek films. Plus, I think Capper is very smart and sneaky at times. Plus, he makes a great supporting character. Next is Captain Solano, voiced by Zoe Saldana. Best known from James Cameron's Avatar, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, The Book of Life, and of course, Guardians of the Galaxy. Solano is a humanoid parrot and a jaded pirate captain who is relegated to the Storm King's delivery service. Solano cares for her crew, and she's a responsible, thoughtful, and empathetic leader. Plus, I think she and her crew are awesome. Next up is Princess Skystar, voiced by Kristen Chenoweth. Best known from the Broadway musical Wicked which will be coming a movie in 2019. <clears throat> anyway, she's also been in films like Strange Magic and the Peanuts movie. And she'll be in the upcoming Christmas movie, The Star. Sky Star is an excitable sea pony and magically transformed hippogriff princess. Also, I think she's a really fun supporting character. Skystar's mother, Queen Novo, is voiced by Uzo Aduba. Novo is the benevolent ruler of the hippogriffs turned sea ponies. The character is described as loving, but also a little too strict and stern. In other words, she wants to protect her group to the best of her ability, and wants to create a life of peace and stability. She doesn't take any nonsense and will do everything in her power to protect her family. And finally, we have singing sensation Songbird Serenade, voiced by Sia. Songbird Serenade is a Pegasus and famous pop star in Equestria. The character's design is modeled after Sia's likeness. What's more, 
Sia contributed an original song for the movie titled Rainbow. And in my opinion, it is such an amazing song to listen to. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, My Little Pony the Movie has got to be one of the best animated movies of 2017 and a great return to hand-drawn animation since the Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. The music and songs are wonderful. The story is epic and adventurous. The main six are adorable characters, including Spike. Tempest is a badass and a sympathetic villain. Grubber is a really funny character. And of course, the Storm King is a really threatening villain. Plus, the new supporting characters like Capper, Skystar, and Captain Solano are really memorable. Plus, after seeing this movie, it makes me want to watch the TV series, and hopefully I can buy the past seven seasons on DVD. As for my final rating, I give this movie a full 100%. I know I'll be first in line when it's released to DVD and Blu-ray next year. Well, that's all for today, Phillies and Gentle Colts. Be sure to join me again for my next blog. Mustang Power.